Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. Um, now this is just going to be a quick review video. Um, I've been asked by a lot of people about Sugden, uh, particularly the A21, uh, and also a lot of people have been asking about the new Exposure 3150, which is surprising considering it's only been out a short time. Uh, I've had a lot of a lot of requests about that. So what I've decided to do is put the two together uh, and talk about the two because they're actually quite different to each other. They're quite different designs, quite different sonically they're quite different but, but I'd say they're both the best sort of available at the money um, they've got the, the, the price point to themselves but they are very different to each other and I, lo I love both otherwise because we're quite fussy I don't tend to I don't do anything I don't like in the, in the shop so everything everything here is things that I love um, and these two even though they're totally different to each other I think they're, they're both great amps so anyway let's um, let's have a look and, uh, and go through features etc Okay, there you go. There's, uh, we've got the Sugden on the left, and there's exposure. Um, features wise, very similar actually. Um, straightforward rotary knob for the uh, for input. Um, Sugden's marking this as phono line one, line two, line three, line four. So all your all your line inputs are basically the same. So you can plug anything into that um, that isn't a record player. Because almost everything I would have thought nowadays, sort of tape players, CD, TV. DVD players, phone, they're all like what you call line output. There's only there's only phone now which is, is different really so um, manufacturers tend not to label these now because there's so many options, I mean, streamers and all sorts of much stuff you can you can connect into uh, Bluetooth receivers and things like that so they, they tend not always to label these. Uh, labeling phone because that is a different input and you can't plug anything in, else into that. Uh, with a Sugden the phono input is optional you can you can buy it with or without so the the 21L is the line only version, or you can buy the straight 21, which has got the phono stage built in. There's a couple hundred pound difference. Like that. So you, you you choose at the at, at time of purchase, really. Uh, exposure slightly different than that account. Um, looking at the actual selector switch, this has got a it's not a mechanical switch, it's logic controlled. Uh, we seem to be pretty well across the board in most companies now. It's just it's something you see a lot, and it is. It is Probably more, ultimately more reliable in the long term, but we're talking like 30 years. Um, so on, on here we've got, um, showing here is auxiliary on phono, which I'll explain in a sec. Then we go to tuner, CD, auxiliary, AV, which I'm assuming will be a pass-through. So you could use it within an AV system and have you know your AV amp doing the AV side, but still use the, the power amp out of this. And then you've got tape, which unusual to have a tape input but um, strangely the tape players are sort of coming back a little bit actually there's quite a lot of people asking about tape at the moment probably spurred on a little bit by the, the vinyl sort of explosion um, so not totally surprised that's on there really the um, like I say the, the first input here the exposure you buy as a um, line only you can specify to have a card at time of purchase or later on you can actually add it, add it later and it goes onto this input. So if you put, plug the card in, that, that, that then becomes the phono input. You can also specify, and I think there's only one input on here. So I think it's it's either it's it, it's it's either or. It's not and. If you want to have an internal DAC on this, um, I think that goes on the same input. So it's it's a phono phono or DAC. It isn't phono and DAC. You can specify for it. So there's yeah. I think I think I, think, I, think quite, I, think I quite like that. I think really. I think. Amplifiers at this level should, probably shouldn't be having internal DACs, if I'm honest. But I think to have the option there is quite, you know, quite a fair, fair thing to do, really. Um, on the front of here, we've got that's your um, remote sensor, and there's a headphone socket. On the front of the Sugden, we've got remote sensor, power light, on-off switch, no headphone socket. But again, if you're at this sort of level, generally, I think people would buy a headphone amp, which will just plug into the um, record out on the back there which is a much better way of doing it so most most specialist amps don't so if anything it's a Sugden which is it's the exposure that's an exposure the exposure which is unusual in having one really um, it isn't something you see very often right so that's the features between Sugden and exposure the one big difference actually is um, Sugden's what they call class A Exposure is Class A B. Um, class A is by far the least efficient way of doing it. 
Um, the benefits are uh, Class A is very, 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 very natural sounding, very valve like, um, and very, very fast sort of transients and that sort of thing. The reason it's fast is that, and the reason the reason it's inefficient is Class A is a little bit like if you imagine driving a car. I mean, normally you would just if you're pulling if you say pulling away to junction, which is sort of the equivalent of a music signal coming on. Um, you put your foot on the accelerator, bring the clutch up, and off you go. Um, and it's like a gradual increase of power as you go. That's that's how class A class well class B work. Class A B is a little bit slightly a mixture of the two, a bit really. But go into that. Um, that's that's your sort of standard way of doing it. Like exposure, do it, and pretty much everybody else do it. Class A is like sitting. Sitting at the lights with your foot flat on the accelerator, with the engine bouncing off the off the end stops, and when you want to go, you just completely throw the clutch out and go. Um, your sort of wheel spin start type way of driving. That's kind of how Class A works. It's 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 running flat out all the time, and it dr just draws from that power as it needs it. Uh, it doesn't have to build up. It doesn't have to accumulate power to then use it. It's it's there immediately. So you get this very very fast transient, very you know very clean clear dynamic sound from Class A. Um, the big drawback is um, most of that energy is dissipated as heat, uh, which I'll, I'm going to do a little, do a little experiment um, later and just show you how much heat's dissipated by these. Uh, but it also means that the power output tends to be quite low, so the, the signal's rated about 23 watts. Uh, it isn't an issue, really. Um, I'm not saying it isn't an issue. It can be an issue, but generally it isn't an issue. Not as much of an issue as people would imagine. Um, you know, it's not a case. Like I do get customers saying, "Oh, I need at least 100 watts." You don't need 100 watts. It's not. It's not really how it works. The difference between 20 odd watts of the sub and, and the 110 watts of the, the exposure in actual volume terms isn't as much as you would have thought. It's not four times the volume. It's probably 10 or 15 percent more um, from the exposure. And also, the, the sub is designed a proper proper amp, a big transformer, and as the impedance drops, the, the wattage increases. So on lower impedance speakers, the wattage is higher anyway. So if you worry about numbers, then it's not it's not an issue anyway. Um, it's only if, really if you've got inefficient speakers or a particularly big room. I mean, if your speakers are above 86, 87 dB, you're not going to have an issue. Uh, and if your room's smaller than about 20 feet by 15 feet, you're not going to have any issues. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, I tend to say to people, just... Uh, if you want to come and borrow one, just just bob in and, and borrow one for the weekend and just see how it works in your system. But um, it tends to be if you listen to one of these at home, you'll never bring it back. It's one, it's so absorbing the sound. So it's a very natural, big, open, comfortable sort of sound. It's it's um, never offensive, never boring. Just totally involved. It is it is a bit like sitting sitting in the front row of a concert and just. Um, being to getting totally involved in, in, in the performance. Um, it stops being hi-fi and starts being a performance. That's the thing about the sudden, it really is. It's like a good valve amp, but without all the hassle. Um, uh, yeah, you get this, like I say, a huge natural sound stage off them. Um, one of my favorite all-time amps, this actually, this, this and the bigger version of it. Um, and it's until the exposure came along, there wasn't any competition for this at this sort of money at all. Um, but the exposure, really, um, considering when you if you look at the spec of it and everything else, quite often I mean it's 110, watt, 110 watts per channel and it's you know all this sort of thing. Um, quite often amplifiers like that can there's an awful lot of them now that sound very very sterile and bland and you can hear every little every little bit of detail in the music, but there's no interest there. It just you, your mind wanders when you're listening to them. Not so the exposure. This is very, very involving. It's sort of Sugden level involving, uh, which is a, which is a major thing to say because there's nothing else out there generally. I would have said that that come near Sugden for for musical involvement. The exposure is right up there with it, but it's very, very clean and clear and got all the other sort of tech, you know, the, the technical side of it, the you know, the actual hi-fi side of it. Dry speakers extremely well. I think overall the Sugden Sugden is a sort of warmer. Overall, probably a more enjoyable sound, but it's very, very close. I mean, it's not um, if you can't accommodate, you know, the power rating of that, or you can't accommodate the heat, because you do need to place these quite carefully. You can't have them tight in on shelves or anything, because that's not not a great idea. They need, you know, somewhere where they've got ventilation. Exposure, 
being class A B not an issue because it's it's class A only for the first sort of mic few microwatts really, and then it switches to class B, which is a more efficient um, way of producing the power. Um, yeah, I think the exposure is quite surprising. There's, there's a, quite a lot of, like I say, quite a lot of amplifiers that are sort of similar money, similar designs, and they, they just don't seem to have cracked that. Um, just they just sound bland. Um, I think possibly because of the way, because of the sort of movement towards streaming. I think with streamers, you probably don't notice the same. Possibly, I think a lot of digital sources are very bland, and they don't. Possibly, some some other brands of amplifier, you wouldn't really notice it. Um, but the exposure, if you're into you know, a vinyl or a decent CD player, um, you really hear that sort of, um, that sort of involvement, you, know, you really get that involvement in the music. So that's those two. Um, experiment wise, I'll, um, I'll just, before I, I do the experiment, I'll, um, I'll just show you the back panel. Um, I'll do a bit of clever editing because I don't want to unplug anything. Because what I've done, I've, I've, I've had these on all day. Um, I'm just going to uh, show how you know, what the temperatures are like between the two, just to give you an idea between between class A B and class A temperature wise. Um, I'll actually film that now, and I'll I've only just thought about this as I'm going along. I'll film it now um, and swap swap it around in the editing, so uh, I can just show you the back panel first. Right, so uh, rear panels. Uh, we've got the subdin here, so we've got straightforward IEC main socket, um, quite nice speaker. A binding post actually, they've got a binding post, they've got the, the four nail socket in the end. Uh, a very generous uh, binding post there, so you can use spades here or you can actually put bare wires into there. Tend, tend not to say, tend to say not to use bare wire, but uh, it's there if you want it. Um, there's your phono input with, that's the, the earth tag for it, so you can, if your turntable's got an earth on it, or, or, or a separate earth on it, you can use that. Then there's the four inputs plus tape as well and then preamp out so tape output is if you've got a tape deck or if you've um, say got a headphone amplifier or think like stacks headphones which use need a full level output and then the preamp output which is a variable output so this to that you could add another power amp if you wanted to um, also you can you can use that with um, uh, some uh, sub uh, active subs and things like that you can use that um, so that's that. The um, exposure again, similar IEC. There's two sets of um, outputs on this, so I mean they're just bridged together inside anyway. But it just gives you, if you want to buy amp, sorry, buy wire, um, it gives you actual sockets for doing that, which just makes it a bit more straightforward. Um, that's the ground terminal for the phono input. Uh, the phono input's actually over there, but then the ground's over here, which is you might have to adjust your cable a little bit to make that work. And then you've got your tuner CD, auxiliary two AV, sort of inputs, and then you this is your tape, play and record, and I'll just answer the phone. It breaks my concentration total. Right, I'm back again. Um, I completely forgot where I was up to. Anyway, I'll start again. So IEC, IEC plug, um, two sets of speaker outputs, so two right, two left, so you can actually buy amp. I've done it again, buy, not buy amp, buy wire. Um, and you've got, uh, the, this is the first input where you've got the, the either a line, it's either a line input or if you've got the card and it becomes phono input. And tune your CD, auxiliary to AV. Uh, and these two relate to a tape player, but it's just another input plus a fixed output. So that's, you know, literally full line, full line output all the time, independent of volume. So you can plug in your headphone amplifiers to this, anything, that, anything that's got a separate volume control on it, so I, like I said, headphone amps, uh, stacks, energizers and things like that use full line out and then be attenuated themselves. Um, so I'm pointing to this one, but I should be pointing to that one. That's your full line out, that's your input. And then you've got two variable preamp outs on this, so you could actually run, which is quite useful if you're running, say, below us here we've got these little, two, two little monoblocks, you could actually um, Add a pair of monoblocks on, then add another pair of monoblocks on, so you can actually run. I've had this a system years ago where I had four monoblocks and I had every a pair of two-way speakers with each drive, with each driver having its own amplifier. So that's quite a nice touch. You can particularly as they, particularly as they sell monoblocks, um, that's quite a nice upgrade if you want to if you want to move 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 into sort of multi-box systems. Uh, and 
that's the, the ground for the phono. Well, I, think, I think I've just done this bit, but basically yeah, the, you might find you need to separate your ground off a little bit. If it's if it's captive within the cable, you have to separate, to make it reach, you have to do that. So, so that's the back panels. Um, I'll now go to the experiment with the magic of editing. Um, right, okay, the experiment wise, um, actually bought bought myself something a while back. You know when you buy yourself something you think this is really useful, this is going to be something, I really need one of these. Uh, and then you find out when you've actually bought it and got it home that you've absolutely no use for it whatsoever. Um, well, I bought myself one of these little heat, um, sort of remote heat uh, devices. Um, like I say, absolutely, absolutely no. It comes down to it, no use for one of these whatsoever, uh, except quite good for showing how how um, how hot amplifiers are on. So what I'm going to do, we're going to have a a bit of a heat off between the exposure, the subden, and, um, and a cup of Cheshire Audio Chamomile tea, which is uh, freshly poured, you know, just to, just to give us sort of a, an idea about where where we're up to heat wise. Um, so ambient temperature in the room at the moment is about 23 degrees, I would have said. So uh, we'll try with the um, try with the exposure, roughly above where the um, it's going to go in above where the actual heat source will be, which is sort of above output transistors. So we're looking at about 28 degrees C, so a bit warmer than room temperature. Uh, for anybody in America, let's do it on Fahrenheit, so 83, deg 83 degrees. Okay, so moving that around, I think it's pretty well all across the top on it, so it dissipates the heat sort of through the little vent there and a little bit through the case work because there isn't really that much heat to speak of anyway. It's uh, like I say, class B, uh, very very efficient. Okay, so let's try it on the uh, try it on the subdom. Now the place on the actual top plate of the subdom, 141 degrees. That isn't actually where the heat is is um, sort of sent to in the subdom. It's actually Release through the, um, the heat sinks on the side here. So we've got 57 degrees, 58 degrees. So to track down the, the heat sink a little bit, just see whether if there's a hot spot. Yeah. So yeah, for about 57, 58 degrees. Switch that to yeah, about 100, and, about 135 Fahrenheit perhaps. Around about that. Right, and the third one. Let's. I have absolutely no idea which is going to be the hottest to be honest. Just a quick edit now because my tea gone cold, so I've, uh, I've replenished the tea. <laughs> so I'm always faffing about me. I've, I've, I've re replenished the me, me from a cup of tea so we can uh, we get, a, get a fair test now. So, um, cup of tea is showing, it's not far 68 degrees, which you'd expect really. It is warmer than this oven. Um, I've tested it before, it was cool, and I thought I can't be right. 68 degrees, 155 Fahrenheit for a cup of tea. So it's it's, it's not that far off um, the heat of a, a fresh cup of tea, really, because this is you know, basically no milk in there. It's the boiling water in a cup, so there's a certain amount of, of loss there. But, um, now, it just gives, gives you an idea of the sort of temperatures we're talking about, but um, there you go. So there you go, that's the, uh, the Sugden and the exposure. Um, hope this has been useful or interesting. If you've got any other questions about the, these two, just um, perhaps send me an email or give me a call. Uh, if you ever want to try any of these uh, these out, just just let me just let me know. We can have a, have a have a listen here. We do, do learn things out occasionally. So if you want to have a look, try one at one at home, um, yeah, that's uh, that's that's it for today. Uh, hope you've enjoyed enjoyed this one. If you want to give us a subscribe or a like, that's that's always really helpful. Um, and if you've got any other ideas of, of, of things we can review, just uh, let us put that in the comments, actually. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, see you again soon.